So I had one particular product so far, birthday cake. Now I want to uh, work with um, cookies. And cookies is perfect for selling them in, in different amounts. One cookie at a time, or three at a time, or a dozen. And I don't mean about someone typing here three. I mean that I want to sell them already grouped together in a quantity. So that's going to be variations. Variations is a little kind of weird to wrap your mind around the first time. So let's, let's go look at it. Back in the dashboard, under products, we have variations. So I'm going to make some notes here. Variations. Our versions, our different versions of your products. So example, t-shirts. Those can be small, medium, large, etc. We're going to do uh, cookies. I want to sell them as three, you know, a, uh, a bundle of three, a six, or twelve at a time. Uh, we could do uh, pies, a pie of, I don't know, a, a eight inch pie or a ten inch pie so, uh, diameter. So we can sell different versions of the same thing, different versions of the same pecan pie. But do you want it in, in an 8-inch tin or 10? We can sell uh, those same uh, snickerdoodle cookies. Do you want to buy three of them at once, or six, or 12? And you can buy that red shirt uh, with that logo. But do you want the small, medium, large, extra large, extra small version? OK, all of those are variations. So either. Add variations to a product when you create it, or create variations first, then add to a product. Recommendation number two. I think it is easier and makes more sense to first create your variations and then attach them to a product. So that's why we're in the variation section here first. So let's look at this screen, variations. Variations allow you to create options for your products, example, t-shirts. OK, fine. So here's what we want. We want a new variation set. What's its name? Slug fills itself in, description, optional, and price and such. OK, so I want to sell cookies in batches of one dozen, half a dozen, and two dozen. All right, 6, 12, and 24. Maybe we'll do the three at a time. That's what, a quarter dozen. So the name here will be one dozen cookies. This would make sense, but actually it's in the wrong direction. Because these variations can be applied to more than just cookies. I want to sell also cupcakes in collections of one dozen, half a dozen, or two dozen. So by calling this one dozen cookies, this variation can only be used for cookies. Well, it would make sense simply generically one dozen. I want to apply one dozen to cookies, or cupcakes, or cake pops. OK, so that makes a little more sense. But still, what would you call, like, generically a collection? You know how you call a collection of birds a flock, and a collection of fish a school? What would you call, like, a collection of? These baked goods or cookies, yeah. batch, bunch, etc. Any one of those could work. I was thinking batch. A batch of cookies, a batch of cupcakes, or a bunch of cookies, a bunch of cake pops, whatever. So, some more generic term as sort of the parent element. 
assign a parent term to create a hierarchy. The term jazz, for example, would be the parent of bebop and big band. So for here, think of in terms of what's like the big uh, name of the collection of things. Now, I always wonder if it's true. It's probably true. What do they call a collection of crows? Oh, it's large. Oh, that's geese. That's geese. Yeah. Yeah. It's a murder. Oh. A murder. A murder of crows. That's a collection of crows. Not a flock of crows. A murder of crows. So think of that big name for what your things are. In this case, batch. This can be then applied to a batch of cookies, a batch of cupcakes, etc. So the way you do this is two things. You first define the parent, then the child element. So first a parent grouping the variant set. Second a child element the variation. So batch, one dozen, two dozen, one half dozen, these three will be child elements of this parent. So first we need to create the, the parent one. Go ahead and type that and click Save at the bottom. It's a batch. Uh, description and price, don't worry about that just yet. Just click Add New. Scroll back up to the top. So now we've got um, batch as the parent. We then need to remember to change this. People always do this wrong. I want to now do one dozen, half dozen, two dozen as part of a batch. Change this from a new variation set to the parent we just created. Make sure you do that. You're going to mess everything up if you don't do that. All of those other one dozen, two dozen will be its own parent, which, which doesn't make sense. So we created the parent. We just, we're setting it now. Here's the child elements. It should be more obvious about now we're creating a child element. We're creating a child element as soon as you choose a parent element. And now the name's here. One dozen. That could be one dozen cake pops, one dozen cupcakes, one dozen cookies. My screen looks so different because I didn't generate the variation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're not. You're, you're doing it. Remember, I said either version one or version two. You're doing version one. You do, you do version two. Well, direct to variation is not the problem. Got it. Yeah. Job. That's what we need. Okay, so we'll do that one more time. Batch. Create. So now the parent change that to batch. One dozen name here. I could do description if I want. 12 items. Add new variation. And it says, OK. One dozen is indented. One dozen is related to a batch. Let's do the next one. Parent is the batch. Name is two dozen. So I'm selling these in groups of one dozen, two dozen, and half a dozen. Two dozen is, and this will appear on screen to the user, so you should spell it, capitalize it how it should look like to the user, because it's going to be a little drop down menu. Like, let's say you buy a t shirt and it has a drop down button extra large, extra small, medium, whatever. These things are what's going to go in the drop down menu. 24. One more. One half. We're skipping variation price? Yes. We, we uh, add that uh, in a different spot. We could add it here, but we're adding it in a more a spot that makes more sense in a moment. One half dozen. Six items. Now, when you're creating these categories, 
might uh, be easier. In the high industry, they look up T920 over Hewlett Packard T920, but people are more likely to search it by Hewlett Packard T920. Do these categories have relevance, or do these products have relevance in how we can? Yes, your products, your categories, your variations, all of these things should be named in the way that would make sense uh, for the person searching, wanting to buy it. So one half dozen, I will add that one, and this is good enough for the moment. Batch, one half, two dozen, one dozen. Those can be applied now to anything that it would make sense. Uh, a batch of cookies, cupcakes, cake pops, etc. Is there a way to reorder this so that it makes sense, half dozen, one dozen, two dozen? Because presumably that's the order it's going to appear in the drop down box. There is. There is, and we do that when we, uh, when we attach it to a product. All right, so this is what, what I had in my notes about. OK, either add the variations to the product when you create it. Nope. We did it this way. Create the variation first, then add to the product. That's what I recommend. So we created our variations first. Um, next, we will add it to a product, or create the product and add to it. So uh, I want to do cookies. I want to do chocolate chip cookies, and I want to attach these variations. So under products, let's add a new product. Chocolate chip cookie cookies. You know, some sort of description if you want. Category cookies. I'm doing chocolate again, so I could use chocolate again if I want. Name of a product, description, tag, category. Don't worry about image at the moment. Don't worry about price at the moment. Because we're dealing with variations. Now that I've got variations, there's something here. Now there's a little bit more confusion. Then once you do it, it'll make sense. There's manage and setup. We, we want to set up, we want to attach variations to this product. Select the variation sets and the corresponding variants you want to add. We've got the add new here, but again, I think this is a little more confusing to do it here at the same time that you're creating your product. I would set up the variation separately first and then attach them. So what we want here is, if you open up the triangle, I want to be able to sell chocolate chip cookies as one dozen and two dozen only, or as one dozen and one half dozen only, or all of them. So this is going to create a product with a drop-down menu called Batch. And these are the three items in the drop-down menu. I want to buy chocolate chip cookies in, one, in a batch of one dozen, or one half, or two. I'm going to select all of them. And just click the first one. I want this one to be sold in all of those variations. We then need to generate. This is what actually attaches these variations to this product. Generate variations. That switches you over to, I'm still in the variation box here, but now manage. So I already set it up. I'm going to manage. And here is where we have then the individual pricing. So because I skipped the basic price over there, I definitely want to set the price over here. Um, I believe this is where you can drag it to arrange it. Let's see, is this it? Um, this is a different screen somewhere here. We'll find it in a moment. But to put it in the order, there is a place to put it in the order. But anyway, for the moment, we can have a picture for every single one of these variations, 
and we can have its own stock keeping unit and price and sale price and how many in stock, and how much more you want to set taxes for. You can even go very deep over here by uh, going to edit a particular variation and then you get a screen here with even more fields and all of that to set. It can be very detailed. For most of us, we're just going to set here. Okay, one dozen cookies is going to be eleven ninety nine. One half dozen will be, I don't know, price wise again. You guys can pick better prices than me. Seven dollars. That's too expensive, isn't it? Two dozen, you'll get a great deal. It'll be tw it'll be twenty two ninety nine. Whatever. So these prices, you can set them up that you're also you. You save more if you spend more. You know that trick that everyone falls for? If you spend more, you'll save more. Question? Where do you get this page? Well, I created a product, and it's in the variations box. Yeah. You mentioned coupons. What you're doing here is basically the same thing, like you're discounting it for a larger purchase. No, coupons are usually with a special code that gets applied that takes off a base price and lowers it somewhere. <coughs> this is I wouldn't this is a discount, yes, but it's not a technically a coupon. A coupon requires a code and then some percentage is taken off or uh, value. Yeah. You have to first select which um, variants you want, turn them on, then click Generate. And then when you get back to Manage, then they should be manageable there. So you could do it like this. If half a dozen is six cookies, you'll get half a dozen for six dollars, then yes, this is where you say, well, spend more, you get more. Ten ninety-nine by one dozen, you save, you know, two dollars. So that's great, I'll buy, I'll buy even more, because I'm saving more. And then, well, how can I resist? I'm going to buy two dozen of them, and I'll get them for nine ninety-nine. I think now I'm giving them away too cheaply, but enticing people. So remember to click Save these variations so that that info gets saved into that product. And then publish the product at the top right. Go visit site to see how that works, to see what it looks like. Publish the product, visit the site, and see how that's working. Did you find? All right, so if I go back up to publish, visit shop. In my shop screen, I've got birthday cake, chocolate chip cookie, alphabetically. There's the product. Now, in my case, because my screen's a little different, some of these things are starting to look weird and overlap. <coughs> Well, this is starting to go on top of that. Again, this is the problem of the theme. This is not an e-commerce theme, so some of these things don't look that great. Uh, when we move into WooCommerce next time, we will pick a better e-commerce theme, but I bet if you're kind of seeing some weird things here and there, uh, it's the theme is going to fix that. But anyway, chocolate chip cookie. So from this preview screen, I see there, batch. Also, if I click on the name of the product, we didn't do the read more, but remember you can click on a product's name, not the icon, but the product's name, and then it previews the whole product, and there it is again. So see, this is what I'm saying here. There's a little bit of overlap on the text. That'll be fixed with the theme batch. And these are the items that I added there. So even before I added it to my cart, prices start from $6. And once I start to select one of these, okay, well, I'm going to add the one dozen, one dozen, then update. That'll be ten ninety nine. And it won't let you add a cart without clicking. Exactly, because you it it, it 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 won't without choosing it won't know what you actually want. So. But it still has 
rearrange the order. Yes, exactly. I need. I, I always forget about that. Where do you go to rearrange it? There is a place to rearrange that exactly the order you want. But. So on this page right here, um, if we went to edit product, could we add the photograph? Yes. I never added a, pro a photo, so you can add it either oh, to okay. Okay. the yeah. set featured image yeah. okay. or to the individual variations. No, it's not smart enough for that. It just will tell you if you're going to buy. So each individual unit of one dozen is that. But it's not taking this into account. Two of those until you add, and then it'll show you that in the in the checkout cart. Your, um, say, say you, you know, cakes and cookies are completely different. You spent all this time uh, doing the search engine and the metadata and the slug and all that for a chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. Is it a simple du simple duplicate to create a macadamia in that cookie? Is it just change a few small things? Or Maybe. Or, or do you need to no, you never really need to program anything, but uh, you could duplicate something that exists and make the changes to that that exists, sure. Because macadamia cookies versus chocolate chip cookies, well, it's going to be the same category. I'm going to use the same batches and prices, but I'm going to need to change descriptions and pictures. Yeah. So you could do that. You could duplicate something that exists and change the, de the little bit of defaults. How do you duplicate? That, unfortunately, is not built in. You have to get a page dupli or product duplicator plugin. Oh. So under posts or pages, there's no button that says duplicate this. That's an extra thing, uh, a free plugin. Uh, same things with uh, products. OK, I, I want to reuse chocolate chip. If you select it, notice there's no option anywhere uh, for duplicating. So you'd need. No, the duplicate's there. Where? Uh, where it says edit and delete and all that. Right. Or below. Or right there. Oh, OK. That's new. They didn't have that before. Great. You did that new upgrade on Thursday, right? I mean, on Tuesday. Ah, yeah. We did that update, and that might have done it. OK, there we go. Duplicate. It's a duplicate. So I can go into uh, edit. So now it is, yeah. And then we've got their maca Yeah. Ma macadamia? How do you spell that? Maca maca macadamia? OK. So then you change the things for that. That automatically came in. It's still in cookies. I never added a picture, but it would be there. Um, that automatically came in with the variations right there. Actually, I don't want to sell these in half a dozen. So I would go to Setup and turn off what I don't want. I don't want half a dozen. So then I only got one dozen and two dozen for macadamia cookies. Yeah, you should bring the prices on those. <laughs> okay, here we go, 19. <laughs> Question. Yeah, if you were going to do something like a, a cookie platter, you create a product cookie platter, and then you can have to allow them to select the number of each cookie. That's a little more complex that you need the pro version because that would be, it's like you're, you, it's a platter, yeah, it's uh, you're buying donuts. You know, uh, you want this, that one with sprinkles and the one that's pink and then the one with chocolate. You, you're picking this, the default. Cart is not set up to do that sort of thing. Like, I want to grab this one plus this one plus this one into a group. That would be a, what's that called? Um, I'm forgetting what it's called. But it is it is a thing that you can do, but not with the basic free version of the plugin. It's a little more advanced. And what we're trying to make is start thinking about I can do things like sell images that can license images. Grouped products is what it's called. That's what it is. Grouped products. So yes, you can have it that if you bought the physical version of a photo, you can also buy the digital version, grouped, optionally or required. You can do that, but that's with the that's with the paid version of the plugin. Just 
Sure. Yeah. And then that particular product changed the de the details of it to to accomplish that. Yeah. That could be a variation. So under each product, they have to be a purchase and a license option. From what we have of this free version, that would be the best way. If you wanted to do the upgrade, you would get a more powerful way, perhaps. But again, it's not the free way. You go back to setup and then turn off the ones you no longer want. You edit the product and then you scroll down to the variation of the product and then you go to the setup. So um, at this point, um, let's end the main lecture so we can so you can have your time to do a little practice or uh, do your duplicator backup. I'm going to do a backup of my site in just a moment. We'll do a little bit of time, lab time. We didn't quite get to coupons. I'd say look at that on your own because what I want to do next time is we'll start with WooCommerce. Uh, we've looked at WP Commerce, various aspects of it. There's still more you can learn, and on your own you could practice it, sure. But next time when we come back, we'll do WooCommerce, and we'll see many similar things and different things, and more practice is more better. Yes? I just realized something um, with that duplicate. is that when you change the, the name of the uh, item, you still got to go in and edit the permalink and update it. I would assume it would just simply add like an extra number one or something. Well, yeah, it does. That's duplicate, but it's like you're using it as a template. You're gonna add a lot of products. You gotta go in and change that uh, permalink. That's true. So when I when I created chocolate chip cookies, its slug was chocolate chip cookies. After I did the duplicate, the duplicate in the macadamia, its slug is chocolate chip cookie duplicate. Yep. Oh. So. So you gotta change the slug. So you can change the slug yourself then? Yeah. It fills itself in, which usually is fine. But in this special case of making duplicates, well, it only knows to duplicate what it came from, and then it doesn't change it to the new thing. So that just shows up on the top, because on the site, it put the cookie right beneath it, like it's another product. Yes. This is an internal, in the address bar, behind the scenes, right. that should be done, because then you'll have a lot of pages called chocolate chip cookies, but how many people are really looking up at the address over here? They're, they're actually browsing the site and buying products and all of that. Right. Now, for SEO purposes, that may be something to think about, because you have more than one thing called chocolate chip. So it's not a perfect solution, because it, it doesn't know what you want, and um, yeah. We had a um, saying in the computer lab that the problem with computers is they do exactly what you tell them to. Mm -hmm. Nothing more, nothing less. All right, so let's end the lecture right here. I'm going to put my notes in the network folder. I'm going to upload the video. We'll have a little lab time on your own. Uh, do the backup of the site. Follow the duplicator backup handout, the uh, archiving part of it. Make a copy of your site, and when we come back next time, we'll start WooCommerce. Okay, we'll